Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Adrian Rios. I am a makeup artist. I have been in the industry for about 17, 18 years, give or take a few months. And um, I'm pretty new to like the YouTube tutorial and that kind of demo thing. Um, so you have to forgive me if this is a little boring. Um, I'm not really into like all the editing and super editing or photoshopping of things or filters or when we're doing like the little dings and what have you. Um, it's just really not my style. Um, I'm very like to the point about everything. What is a men's makeup? What is masculine, feminine to me? Um, and how does that relate to cosmetics? So I will say right off the bat, um, these are my opinions and it doesn't make a fact, but I'm gonna share with you my thoughts after being in the industry for such a long time. The thing about masculinity and femininity for me when as it pertains to um, social or theoretical ideals, um, which is what it is to me. It's an ideal. Um, femininity and masculinity are the two sides to the same coin. And it's part of the human experience. You can be a man and be masculine, but also be feminine. And it's part of the experience and you should learn that side of yourself. Um, and you can be a woman and have masculine traits and feminine traits at the same time. And it's perfectly normal and perfectly fine. When I'm speaking about makeup as a technique, as an art form, especially as an educator, there has to be a way for me to describe the look that we're trying to achieve or be able to teach and convey that message to a client or a student that wants to learn how to do makeup and how to address certain concerns um, when it comes to their clientele and when, or when you're doing your own makeup, right? So when I say physically masculine, there are innate features of a man and innate features on a woman that are just, it is the way it is, right? We hit puberty and we develop and men's skulls get larger. They get a little bit more bony because there's more mu muscle structure. Um, they're a little bit more prominent here typically. Um, not always, but, but most of the time that's the situation. Um, and the jaws tend to be a little bit more squared off as well. Um, and women have softer, more delicate features. Now, when you look at makeup and its inception and where it came from, you know, makeup originally was actually first worn by men for religious reasons, for ceremonial purposes. It was an adornment. Um, women started wearing it as an adornment as well. And then let's fast forward to, you know, you have your royalty, you have your um, socialites and celebrity and Hollywood royalty that made it popular and made it much more commercial. So when that started happening, it really started to becoming more female dominated and women really started to procure looks that were suited for them and designed for them to enhance feminine features. Um, so that is what I am talking about when I'm speaking about a physically masculine makeup, not men wearing makeup, because you can wear it however you want. But I'm talking about a specific bone structure that is undeniably male. So, which is why, you know, if you die as grim as that may be, you know, and there's nothing left but bones, they can tell if it was a man or a woman. So, I mean, the structure is the structure. Um, that is what I'm talking about. Now, men also wore makeup way back when in theater, right? Um, because women were not allowed to act or be in theater. So men took it upon themselves to play female roles. And when that started happening, they started doing makeup that was designed to make them look more feminine. And those styles are still done today and in drag makeup um, everywhere you look. Contour and highlight and how it relates to men and women um, collectively. Um, well, everyone, um, men, women, non-binary, it doesn't matter. This is for everyone. Um, in terms of technique and just makeup 101. Okay, so highlight and contour is about a relationship to light, how color is absorbed or reflected based on its level of color and depth, um, or foreground and background. So fellas, I know you hear it's painting, it's painting, but it's not actually just painting, it's sculpting as well. And here is why. When we go back to the theater again and we think about a performer on stage, 
the makeup was very, very deliberately done in a way so that from the audience, people could really see you. They could see this feminized face and structure. Um, so a lot of makeup was applied and it was applied basically just so that you could see the person from this vantage point and the actors would walk across the stage with their face forward. Um, you look at fast forward to the 1990s, uh, Kevin Kwan really made contour and highlight really, really popular on actresses, on models, and they looked incredible. And what he did was so um, innovative to bring it to the general public. Just, I love that makeup. It was also designed with purpose. It was designed for women to look incredible on magazine covers and still images, on TV, on television, on movies, on, on media that existed at the time. And typically when you see your celebrities, you really only see them from one vantage point, which is the front vantage point. So all the angles that are done are done in almost like a linear form, like a painting, right? Which is why they call it painting. So if you have a linear line across your face here and here and here and here, it looks great from this point. But then when you turn, the light breaks against the contour lines that you're creating. It's wrong because makeup reveals itself in light, right? And we are creatures of light. We live in light. We don't really, we're not vampires. We're not out in the night or the evening. And anyone can make heavy contour look good in specific lighting um, or dim lighting because you don't really see the lines breaking across the face. But that doesn't really help you in a social media world where we're constantly taking videos of ourselves from multiple angles, where you're on Zoom calls, where you're meeting people in real life. It's not practical. And as soon as a different light hits you, um, whether it's the hue of the light, which you didn't put the right powder on, so now it looks a little funny, or you did your makeup in the wrong angle and the light that you should have been doing your makeup, um, you didn't anticipate, so it looks a little off because now the light is breaking against all the lines that you did in a specific degree of light. Um, and it's just, it's just not a practical makeup. It's not wrong, but it's just not suited for everyday people necessarily. Unless your objective is to show your makeup and for that to be the purpose, then discontinue watching this video and just tell me to shut up. But if you are someone that wants to learn a no makeup makeup, how it can be full coverage and full done, and three-dimensional, where it can be worn in any lighting in no matter what the time, what type of light it is, uh, it's gonna look good from every angle. So if you wanna continue doing the contour the way everyone talks about and the way everyone teaches, and you only wanna look cute from this angle or this angle, which is why all selfies are taken from that position, um, then don't watch anymore. If you wanna learn a better way to do it, then continue watching. So. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is, sorry for that rant, by the way. The first thing you're, want, you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna look at the light that you have in your room or wherever it is um, that you get your makeup done or your face done. So say for today, so today I'm doing a shoot where I need to have a very structured jaw and I want to shade in my head because I'm bald and I'm gonna be dressed up kind of like a cowboy outdoors, so I need the makeup to, and it's dry here. So I need to look hydrated, I need to be sculpted, I need to protect my skin from the sun, I need to make sure that the hues read more golden because we're gonna be outside at golden hour, and at golden hour, the light position is about right about here at this kind of angle. So I wanna try to do my makeup in similar lighting and at a similar degree or angle so that when I create the shapes in here and it looks good and I check it, it's gonna look that much better in the light that it's gonna be in. So what normally happens, and I can always tell basically with the angle that someone does their makeup or their lighting situation at home whenever I see people walking around in broad daylight. Um, and that's because the where the lines are breaking, it's, it's not cute. Anyway. So if you do your makeup where the angle or the degree of light is at a 45 degree angle, then that's the light that you should primarily be in. So take a moment, think about where you're going, what you're doing, what the event is, what the degree of light's gonna be and what type of light it's gonna be and plan accordingly. So because we are gonna be, I have my light set up the way I want 
and I have this light here. I wouldn't normally do this, um, but you guys got to be able to see what I'm doing. So, you know, um, but because I'm experienced, I really don't have to have it. I already know the shapes and what I have to do. So let's get started. So one size fits all sent me some product to try out and we're going to start off with prepping our skin with their under eye patches. So I'm going to go ahead and put these patches on and then ooh, they were like real she moist. Um, I'm going to put these patches on and then once I do that, I am going to get off of here, go do my skincare and then I'll come back and we'll get started on doing the makeup. So they look just like this. Oh, they feel weird. I never do the patches. This is pretty glamorous though, you know? You know something that cracks me up is I just started that TikTok and I'm sure most of you have come from TikTok and I think it's hysterical when men, straight men especially, they have to, they feel a need to tell me that they're straight. Because on the real, I don't give a shit. If you're straight, if you're gay, if you're a lesbian, if you're transgender, whatever. You know, I love everybody. It doesn't really matter to me. And at the end of the day, everybody, if you have that, that shmoney, that green, it all pays the same anyway. So, you know, I'll take your money no matter what. But, okay, so we have the patches on. Um, I've already shaped my beard and trimmed it out. If you haven't seen how I do beard contouring or beard shaping, you should watch it. Um, cause I'm going to start doing them at different lengths so you guys can kind of see how I fiddle with things for different facial structures, different shapes and things that you're trying to achieve. So today I wanted to give myself, um, a more squared shape and cut out some of the length here. So I went a little higher here and here, and I brought it down slightly. I then trimmed out shorter here. And then I also trimmed shorter and shortest to the back so that I can have light more reflective here. Um, which is going to be really important. I'm going to go more in greater detail about that in just a moment. So I'm going to set the timer and then I'm going to take this off and do my skincare and I will be right back. And here we are. So my skin's all hydrated. I have all my skincare on right there. You can see. And my under eyes look a little smoother, a little brighter, and it is definitely, I feel like they're more plump and much brighter than they were. You can see like how the light so I feel like maybe that serum's slightly light reflective maybe, or it could just be that it's keeping that moisture there for me. So, all right, let's, so I do thumbs up. I like that. Good for, I would have to see it for a few weeks to tell you if I think it's good for like long-term use or if it's something that's just good for makeup prep, um, which is different. So. The way I do my skincare for makeup is not the same as I do skincare for every day when I'm not wearing makeup or as a treatment. So I tend to do skincare that's makeup friendly when I'm wearing a lot of makeup um, and skincare for other things. So which brings me to something else. Skincare is not a ritual, all right? You got to learn to assess what your skin needs because your skin changes monthly. Ladies, if it's that special time, you know, hormones throws off your skin, right? So you got to learn to anticipate those things and address it um, accordingly, right? Fellas, same thing. Our skin, if our diet's shit, our skin's going to look like shit. If you're not eating the right things or drinking enough water, your skin's going to show it. So the things that you put into your body have a more profound effect on what you look like and what your skin looks like than the things that you put on. So for me, the only thing that I slightly do that's ritualistic is I take my Lumini vitamins, which is four in the morning and four at night that I take, and it makes my skin look like this um, for that reason. So I like to have my skin looking hydrated, plumped, brightened, and I'm 35 and there's not a fucking line. So enjoy that. Anyway, all right, let's get started with the makeup. So the next thing you're going to do after your skin has absorbed is you're going to prime your skin. Now, I don't have a lot of pores or large pores, toot toot, humble brag. Um, but we're gonna use it and I like to see how this works before I apply it on anybody or clients. And I'm gonna use a tiny bit and I'm only gonna use it where I have any kind of porous area, which is gonna be really primarily right here. And you wanna do it in areas like this because if you collect or you do a lot of makeup on your face, 
um, you don't want it to get that bumbling action or you don't want to be able to see it. So really around where I crease on my nose and then right here. Now, if you have giant pores or texture on your forehead, then by all means, you can place it there as well. So I'm really, really like kind of pushing it up and into the pore. You even want to go down. And the reason is not all your pores or hair follicles are positioned in the same way, right? So you should try to go in different directions. You're going to get a smoother look and a better blend when you apply makeup. All right, done. So I'm not experiencing any itchiness. I like that it's not looking gray or ashy. When that happens with mattifying or smoothing primers, it's fucking shit. So just throw it in the trash. Um, if you see that happening, it shouldn't be happening. And when they tell you, oh, you can work with it. Well, honey, I don't want to fucking work with it. It should work right out the damn gate. I shouldn't have to manipulate product for it to work because who has the time? By the way, this look is not something I do every day. This is just for a look, a photo shoot or special occasions. Guys, I know this is a lot. So if you're not someone that's going to take the time to do it, don't sweat it. All right. So we have our skin primed, ready to go. This is probably the most critical moment of the makeup. This is the moment you really should pay attention to because it matters um, to the entire makeup because if the complexion's wrong, um, it looks like crap. And you wanna have good complexion because it can make or break the look. And when it comes to a physically masculine makeup, it's in the details on the finesse. So now I'm gonna go in with my Adonis corrector and my eyes, I don't think they're as bad as they are normally. A couple more clips. I'm like almost out of this because I use it like crazy. So work from the back of my hand, pull up some extra product, and I'm gonna go right in there. So corrector versus concealer, fellas. A corrector neutralizes dark circles. It does not give you coverage. Anyone that tells you correctors give you coverage is an idiot because that is not their job. That's not what it's for. It is strictly to color correct, not give you coverage, which is why when you put so much concealer on under your eye area, it looks nuts because concealers give you coverage by weight or distribution of pigment, which means the darker the circle, the more you need, which tends to cake up. Now, if you're noticing, you don't really see the orange anymore it just kind of blends in and it blocks out that kind of dark undertone that you're seeing under my eyes, more commonly known as the dark circle. So you can see there, they're blocked, they're neutralized, really, really easy to do. And this one actually dries down on its own. I don't even have to put powder on this and it sets a lot of times I just wear it by itself um, when I don't want to look tired. So really quick, really fast. That's that. All right, the next step is not a common step. This is something that I do for this type of look, but it helps me kind of explain um, highlight and contour. So when I do highlight and contour, I'm also working for or working with my lippy book. If you guys haven't seen this, check it out. It holds literally all my makeup. And because we're going to be traveling and going on site, I need something that I can take with me. So this thing is awesome. So I'm going to reach in and we're going to grab quick fix. I depot everything. That's why this looks like this. And we're going to spray our face. Just to prep the skin and because I need this glossy surface here. And the reason I need the glossy surface is it reveals to me the actual structure to my face. So where you see things that are more light reflective or that appear to be brighter, these are the highest points on your planes on your face. This is what you should follow. And you want to stick and remain within that silhouette and not, you can fudge it a little bit here and there, of course, which is what I'm going to show you. But as long as you stay within that realm of where the light breaks your face normally, um, the makeup will always look good. And even if it's an altered hue of light or a darker light, it'll only look better. So I'm going to spray myself again because that stuff dries down pretty quick. It smells so damn good. It's like coconut or something in there. And then I take the Officially His Concealer and... You see how bright it is here? We're gonna follow this. Just like that. And a man's face is also a little bit more squared here. 
So we're going to go straight down, straight down, and same thing on this side. And you want to work almost like in elliptical shapes. You don't want to do like like the linear thing is nobody has lines on their face everything is like oval or elliptical something like that we're going to get to the eyes in a minute and then in here i want to bring this down just a little bit here and here and a little tiny bit here here go ahead and do a little bit right there and then for a man's face, we're going to comb, we're going to comb the brow down first because you're going to take that same concealer and you're just going to place it here, right above the brow bone. It'll make this look more prominent and this is going to look like it's receding. And then here, we're going to do a hard line and square out the face. So what I'm trying to do is line everything lined up and you see how the light is like super reflective on it. It's because it's now following the light. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this lighter color, which is how this works. Highlight works. The lighter the color, the more opaque the pigment, um, the light passes through it or doesn't pass through it and it becomes more reflective. So because I use a concealer, which is more pigment and fuller coverage, it's also much lighter than my skin tone. It's super light reflective. So it's going to make this look like it's pulling out, giving me shape and a more three dimensional appearance, as opposed to doing this like linear line where I turn and it's like off. Um, the other part of this, why didn't I do the triangle thing, right? The other reason that's not the best application choice if you're going out in broad daylight or anywhere in, in general other than a photo or a selfie is your face is not a sheet of paper. It's not flat. Um, your face has form and there is something called foreground and background. The distance from your nose to the light versus here is a different color because this is closer. So in order to maintain that illusion, as you gradually get to the tip, it needs to become lighter in color, not the same shade. And if you're a man and you're doing the highlight all the way up like this, also wrong because now you're pulling this forward and diminishing that physically masculine feature. So if you've seen that and you wonder why it doesn't look quite right, that's why. All right, now the other areas we're gonna work on as well in just a second. I have to blend all this out. And where is my brush? Now, because I used, oof, it's getting hot in here. Because I used a concealer and a really thick one, I need a denser brush. This brush is from my Kitco. And I'm actually going to spray it with the Quick Fix because we're not done working and blending. And it just allows me to continuously blend. So many foundations, concealers today are high performance, which means they last long, which also means they dry fast. So you have to either be able to be quick with your blending or you need to um, learn how to continuously manipulate the product without it drying down on you. Hopefully you guys can see all of this. So we're trying to get the shape from the guy. Now I am gonna cover this with another foundation which you guys are gonna see in a bit too. And then you're gonna bring this in here slightly and you're gonna leave this here, guys, just like so. I know this looks crazy, I promise it gets better. You know, I always see the men doing cut creases on social, on Instagram. I see guys doing all kinds of looks, really. And it's not that I dislike it. I actually like it quite a bit. I think it's fun. I think it's creative. I think um, a lot of it is very gender bending, which I think is really cool too. But it's not a shape that I would necessarily wear myself around town. It's just not my aesthetic. That's all. You know, I like being a man. I may like other men and be into that, but and a gay man, but I like looking like a dude. And not a dude that's wearing a feminine makeup look, a dude that's wearing 
makeup that looks inherently masculine. Yomps. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm digging that already. Now when I do this, I'm gonna lighten that color and I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit later. So, but little by little. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to start sculpting the face. And the way I do that is with a cream contour. Um, you guys, if you've watched me do the beard demo and tutorial, you already know that I love this product. This is the Huda Beauty Tantour. And this brush, this is an angle brush from Christopher Buckle, who's um, a dear friend of mine and he's such a sweetheart. So we're gonna use his brush and I'm going to reshape this and reinforce where I've already trimmed um, and done darker color. So let's get started. So you wanna do a color that's slightly warmer because I'm gonna be, well, my skin's more golden and I'm gonna be going outside. So I need this to look a certain way, but I don't wanna go too crazy. So the guy in the picture has this great jawline and this looks more skin-like than just the shadow that I use, right? And you want it to look like facial structure, which is why I use the cream first, facial structure, but I also want it to layer on the kind of ashy color later that I'm gonna put into my beard so that it looks more emphasized. Um, like it's a beard shadow on top of skin instead of just a grayish tone, right? We got that there. So that's the biggest part of it. And then we're gonna go on the jawline and we're gonna do the jaw. We go right underneath, right there. Just to sharpen that up a little bit. And then a little bit right behind my tattoo and into that crease where the ear is just to make this look like it's pushed back. And then the same thing over here Like that. Now for me, I always think it's hysterical when people are like, you don't even need makeup, you're beautiful, da 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 da. And I appreciate the compliment, but you need water, you need shelter, you need food. Everything else is a want. I know I don't need makeup. I want makeup. So let's get that straight right off the bat. Oh my God, I just spit. <laughs> Look at that jaw, you can see it's already kind of taking form. And then I'm gonna go in with the more precise brush, which is going to be from my kit coat as well. And I'm gonna take a little bit and we're gonna go like that. And in here, and here, and then straight across. And I wanna leave this really, really open because the guy in the picture has a very, almost a very high arch, but he's got um, really, really like large surface area, which is really cool. I like it, I like the look. And then quite a bit over here, quite a bit over there. And then we're gonna do a little bit where I did those concealer marks earlier. And then I'm gonna like kinda like that. This way when I blend it, it gets that grating and it doesn't look so harsh. And then this part, I'm gonna do contour and highlight as well, but I'm not gonna do it with the cream. I'm gonna do it with um, a pencil. A little bit right there. And then let's go ahead and do a tiny bit in here. Now what's nice is because I have a beard, it hides it really, really well. So you don't even see this when I do the finished look, which is awesome. So I don't, by the way, I don't normally do the makeup like this. I usually just like hit and blend as I go. Um, this is absolutely just taking forever. I know it seems like a while. Um, it's only doing that because I have to explain everything. And so you can see all the steps and what this actually looks like. 
All right, so I'm gonna close the tantrum for now because we don't want it to dry out. And we're gonna blend, 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 blend. So I like the shape. I like where everything is currently positioned and all that's left is to blend the contour out, look at it again and figure out what you wanna do. Earlier, by the way, I don't know if you noticed when I did the concealer here, I actually brought it down and now I'm covering it with the, um, with the Tantor cream contour. The reason I did that. So one of my biggest pet peeves and one of the reasons why I don't like the traditional way of contouring with that linear line and like the baking underneath the jaw or the cheekbones, excuse me, is when you tilt your head like this and you're not in the right light, you're gonna see that hard line, right? But if you take the concealer and do it like I showed you in that ellipse and really cover the end, even down here under the cheekbone and encompass that with concealer, when you layer on something that's more sheer like this product, because it doesn't give you coverage, it just gives you dimension, you're gonna see that it looks slightly lighter and because it has that lighter pigment under there, when you tilt your head like this, it's going to counterbalance with the light and make it look a little softer. Now, if you go too heavy on the contour, if you're a woman and you go too heavy on it, you can actually counterbalance that with different products, but I won't tell you that until another time because I've got to have something to do and create, right? So quick fix again. Keep in mind guys, I know it takes a while and you're like, holy crap, this is a mess. But remember, this is for a shoot and something very specific. So bear with. And here you want to go in both directions with your blending. You want to bring it down, but you also want to bring it up. The darkest point should be right in the middle. And this just kind of gives the illusion like my eyes are going more straight across at the same position and evens them out because this one I this is the one that's a little lower on the brow but lower on the cheekbone <laughs> so it's like I have to constantly try to figure out how to do that and then we're gonna go in here and blend the contour and you want to kind of blend it outward like that direction and yes it looks orangey like reddish I'm sorry I know it looks a little red but like I said, we're gonna get to all that. So you see the structure is coming together. And then here, I like to pull it down more. I think it looks more shapely. And I want more broadness in the here to make this look more square. And you almost want this contour to go straight that way. And you're going to kind of buff it out into those more hollowed areas so that it hides that shaping that you did a little earlier. Same thing on this side. Oh my god, I fucking forgot to blend that out. Oh shit. All right. <laughs> It happens, it happens, it happens. So, let's fix that situation. Crap. <sighs> Things dry, so that's my bad. See, even, even all my years of experience, I still fuck it up sometimes. Oh, nice, that concealer actually still blends, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Worked out, huh? Okay, that's looking good. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more to the structure though because it's not quite there yet. His face is also, he's got a little ridge here because he's very lean um, from the appearance of the photo. Now that could have been Photoshop too, but it looks like he's lean. So in here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna very lightly take some contour here and make this look more sunken in. Like that. And then take your brush and go back in and blend it. Nice. I like that. I get so excited when I see this like coming together <laughs> because it's taken me years to get this right and trying out and I'm, I'm a yo-yo dieter, which is really bad. You shouldn't be, but sorry. 
um, we have a tendency to put on weight and lose weight, which means I have to learn a shit ton of ways to do my face. I want a little bit more depth right there. Just a smidge. Yeah, like that, perfect, okay. All right, let's get blending. That was a struggle. <laughs> There you go, now you have some shape, some dimension. We're not done, we're still working with this. Now we're gonna go and start playing with some powder. So this is the one size fits all powder foundation. This is shade medium dark. So this is actually an exact match. Yesterday I put this color on without any moisturizer, no primer, and I live in Phoenix so it's dry as shit here. And it still looked really good. So I'm actually really impressed with that. So, Let's go ahead and do a little bit of coverage where we need. And I think we're gonna do, we're gonna put this where I did the darker color. And for that, we're gonna use a softer brush, something a little fluffier like this one. And I'm just gonna use that to set their darker places so that it's no longer light reflective um and the reason for that is when something's a contour which is why i don't like bronzers for contour when something is light reflective like a bronzer or a sparkly like setting powder it's counterintuitive because you want something to recede not reflect the light so if it has a reflective quality to it um it doesn't tend to look as good so we're using that right into the beard on the neckline boom 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 Set all that in, a little bit in here. Across the lid. And then over here. Nice. Okay, now for the um, highlighted areas or the areas that we did concealer, we're gonna use a loose powder. I prefer loose powder for this because it doesn't give you as much coverage um, and it tends to look a little bit more natural. This is the one size fits all loose powder in translucent. Ooh. So a lot of people like to bake. I am not a baker. Um, I think it's cool when it's needed, but for the most part, I really don't love it. Uh, especially on guys, I think it can look a little dry. And I live in Arizona where it's even drier. So for me, it just doesn't make sense to use uh, baking techniques because it's just gonna look dry and crusty. And who wants to look like a, you know, old Louis Vuitton bag? Okay. Ooh, okay, so first of all, I love the sifter because sometimes it's like a bunch of little things on there and it just doesn't come out enough. So, one of those. And pop this bad boy open. And perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. So, we're gonna take the puff like that. And then you're just gonna hit where you did the highlight color, which is here. A little bit in here as well. Up on the brow. And I'm trying to mattify that light just a little bit, like that. And then here. Now, on the brow bone, I actually want to bake that a little bit, and I want to bake it a little bit on my forehead. I love that it has this flat edge, because I can literally just stamp it and stamp it, which is awesome. Makes it easy. A little more powder. And I'm just going to pick up the powder like that, and we're just going to hit it here. So not only will this mattify the concealer that you did, but it also adds a little bit of coverage when you are packing it on like this and letting it sit there for a minute. And I definitely want this to sit here for a slight second because I want it to become more light reflective. Like, like that, and then don't forget in here, like so. 
Cool. All right, so now we're gonna dust this off in just a brief second. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and while that's happening, we're gonna do the lip. So if you see me do my lip contour, I do contour my lips, I love it. I think it looks really good and I've been doing it for such a long time that I feel like I've kind of perfected this. So he's got a slight like roundedness here. He's got a very pouty lip and his lip is a little fuller on the outsides over here and not necessarily in the center. So we're gonna make that appear. And we're gonna use um, this is the uh, Double Down Brow Powder from Urban Decay. And by the time I do the lower lip, it'll be time to dust off this uh, product. So when you do your lip contour, you wanna start here, not at the lip. And the reason is, is you want, same reason as earlier, it's 3D, man. You want the gradient to come up and to come down. So it makes your lip look like it's pouting, right? Because now up here toward the lip, you can see it's defined, but it still reflects light a little bit more than here. So it makes it look like it's more pronounced or like you're, you know, darken that even more. This product's also waterproof. Everyone asks me, aren't you worried about it coming off? And the answer is no, because this one's waterproof. And I literally can sweat at the gym and this never comes off. Like ever have I had this come off. And obviously I like dig into it. Like that. All right, let's dust off the powder. Take a fluffy brush and just dust it. It's gonna look like skin again in a bit once I finish it off, once I finish the complexion off. This is just the base the shape, right? See it? Okay. I think I want to add a neutral kind of color in here. This is a, a cream foundation. And here with a little bit of a mixture of a slightly lighter concealer for the tip of my nose because remember I told you earlier that remember I told you earlier that um oh my god I'm losing my train of thought I told you earlier that the nose is the closest thing so you want to do the nose with a different color but I like to mix the base color of foundation into it so that it looks more blended and realistic now this guy has a broader nose, which I actually like. I don't like to contour and highlight the nose very much, to be honest. I think that the nose is a character piece. Um, it can also show if someone's like indigenous, which I'm Mexican. So I don't like this idea that a broad nose is not attractive, you know? Um, I don't know who the fuck made that rule up or why. Probably, you know, honestly some white person. Um, decided that that was the best look and that's what everyone does they slim down their nose and I have no idea why because now we can't tell <laughs> what your heritage is anyway all right so let's blend out that foundation a little bit more cool it's looking good yes let's do this and see it up close neat right Okay, let's continue on with the lip. So I actually wanna do, the other day I shaved some ridges in here. You can see the little peaks. I actually did that with the razor so that it looks like it's coming forward. And then I'm gonna take the slightly ashier color out of the box and we're gonna go in here to make this look like it's popped back. You see that? Instantly it pulls it forward from the contrast. It makes it look like that. And then on the lower part, to make this look more rounded and kind of like a butt, we're gonna go dark in here. And you're gonna like kind of pull the color like I'm doing down 
and make it look like it's pulling forward. Do you see it happening? And this guy's like genetically gifted. It's like, that's a good looking man, you know? But this is like painting a house, right? I just like to look a little different sometimes. And you can do it with makeup. And still look masculine. Physically masculine. You know what's so funny is I've done drag too, and people try to come for me about me saying masculine as if I don't like being gay or as if I don't like the femme queens. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the structure, right? And what I'm trying to achieve and the look that I want to go for. And it's just the look that I want. And then we're going to do a little butt here. Dead center. Darkest point we want is right in the middle. Sorry, I'm doing my makeup in the camera. I know I'm not like looking into the camera, but I also feel uncomfortable looking directly into the camera. I don't know why, it just makes me feel weird. So now we have a little butt chin and this looks like it's like protruding and my lips look a lot fuller and they're gonna look fuller still once I do my lip highlight color. All right, so let's continue on and we're gonna do contouring into the jaw, into the beard itself. So he's very, very angular. He's got these like hard lines right in here coming up, which is why I did the colored contour here. So you want to follow it. But what happens a lot of times when I see guys do contours, they do this straight line across, but that's, that's not going to give you that like chiseled angular look, right? You want to like really hit it hard right here like that and color it. It's easier to do this when I grip my teeth. <laughs> and blend it this way. And blend it that way. See? And the same thing on the side. This way when you're like in light, you turn around or you're looking different directions, you look good from every angle. So when I'm painting my face and sculpting my face, you see I'm moving my head a lot. I'm not looking straight on the whole time. It's because I'm trying to follow and mimic the light, making sure that when I'm creating shape and structure that I'm still within the silhouette. You can come up higher and lower as long as you're in that silhouette. The contour won't be noticeable. And I've been wearing these looks out and about in gay clubs at work for many many years and literally no one has ever clocked it or said anything about if anything i get stopped and asked like about how i shape my face or if i have anything on or they'll ask me how do it because they know i do makeup for a living they'll ask me if i have any tips and why does my skin look so good all the time and I am very rarely out of the house. Even when I go to the gym, I'm like not out of the house without makeup on. We want it to bowl a little bit more or be more rounded. Where's that round brush at? In my hand. And... Hmm. Hmm. A little bit more. And I'm using both, both colors, so I'm gonna go ahead and strengthen this jaw by taking the darker color and really going in right here. I definitely want this more shadowy. Okay, so now we're gonna do this section and you need a soft brush for that part. So I'll take, let's do this one. This is a uh, Smashbox. Very, very iconic color. And then I go in here and I start blending the lighter gray color over here, blending it so that this looks normal, like it was grown this way. You don't want this just to be blank. All right, there we go, that's that. All right, let's do a little bit more on the lip. So I use a couple of colors. I use Naked and Naked 2. This one is Naked 2. And we're gonna, we got sharpen this. We are going to do an overdraw on our lip. Earlier I shaved a little bit higher up here um, so that I could do this. 
And I need a mirror for this. So this color is actually really close to my natural lip. And it's a long wear. And I want to go slightly more bowed out over here. I'm giving myself more surface area, but in a minute I'm going to give it more volume. So this is where I feel like a lot of ladies go wrong. They only ever do the overdraw, but they never do the false line, which makes it look like it's just on the false line or like they've been sucking on a fudgesicle all day long. So the trick to do this is you need the contrast again. So dark natural color and then do the lighter color light. Really? Just to find that lip. Now to me that doesn't look natural. That looks like color, but it's going to look natural in just a Sekaruni. Lighter color. Sharpen it, make sure it's a really nice point. And this is when you do the false line. So because his is fuller on the outer corner over here, you're gonna take the line and you're gonna go just above it and replace that position from earlier. But you really wanna taper it off, so focus the, the diameter of color on this area here, like that. See the difference? So then now the light's reflecting off of this, making my lip look right. Too high right there. I've done this for friends and they're like, that's some next level shit. <laughs> and then down here, I want, I don't want it to look lighter up here. I want it to be brightest in here. So we're going to go here and highlight. And then the same thing on this side. So this is actually called highlight too, because that is essentially what we're doing. Playing with the light, utilizing it in the way that we want to get the results that we want. I'm going to add a little bit more of the other color, because it went a little too heavy on the, the highlight color. Cool. And then we're going to take our lip balm. This one is from Becca. You don't want to do too much of this one, it's beautiful, but if you do, if you don't exfoliate your lips, which I exfoliated with the Becca Lip Scrub, if you don't exfoliate and you put too much, it's going to look corpsey. So a blue tint, you want a tint, a hue of color, not like, you know, and just let it glide and then let it kind of hit a little bit on the highlight that you did to give it a little shine. So that it pops. Nice. Digging that. I feel like I want to strengthen the contour just a little bit more. Alright, so the lips are done, the beard is completed, um, the complexion's just about done. So I am taking this blender, this is from Strikes, I think is how it's pronounced, it actually just arrived today and I wanted to try it out. I saturate sponges with All Nighter Setting Spray or Dislike or Quick Fix typically. Um, my logic behind that is if it's Quick Fix, for example, when you're blending your makeup and it's drying down, you have to continuously manipulate it. Um, if you want to get a perfect blend or you want to keep fiddling with it. The thing about that is water, when you think about water that's in makeup or skincare, um, it's distilled, it's filtered, it's clean. Where water from the faucet has a lot of other chemicals in it. And when you're using water, usually you're using it to wash your face or wash your body. And what I'm getting at is water is not designed to blend makeup. Um, it's designed really more to move, remove it or it'll add texture. So this one has, so I use Quick Fix, saturate it with Quick Fix to, if I'm wanting to blend things, but when I'm ready to set, I will set it with all nighter, I'll even, which it already is. And I will spray my face first with all nighter and I will come in and I will start pressing 
all this into the skin even further to ensure that the blend is perfect and that nothing really looks powdery. The other part is we're gonna do um, a tinted balm over it, a tinted moisturizer over this. And the reason I do that is spray first all nighter because it has a little bit of alcohol and I'm counting on it because I need the product that I'm gonna lay over it to dry from underneath as well as on top. And people like, especially women, women like coverage. They want the coverage, but what they don't like about the coverage is that it looks thick or makeup-y and too flawless. You can't see real skin through it. Is we love tinted moisturizers because they're sheer and thin and they look natural and they look skin-like. What we don't like is they don't offer enough coverage, but you can get the best of both worlds. Now, I'm pretty sure this product has titanium dioxide in it, which means it probably has SPF. So what I like to do is instead of going on the highlight part, you're gonna go in here where it would be normally lower and you're gonna use this and encompass the highlight. And even a little bit under the eye. And then work your way up to the highlight. So I'm tricking the eye. So when you see me in person, I'm gonna get up really close too, you're seeing what looks like this transparent quality, but it's you're not looking at skin through it, you're looking at um, makeup. And just go around it. You can see, it looks really nice. It's reflecting light like it should, but the shape is still there. And then the same thing on this side. I should just resprayed the all-nighter, but I'm being lazy. Okay. There we go. All right, and then the same thing over here, you're gonna do the middle and blend and work your way out. Now, of course, you can strengthen everything and the contours if you want to with more powder. I don't feel like it needs it. Um, I'm gonna have a hat on it anyway, and I really only wanted to focus on the, the facial structure down here, not as much on up here. And I need those concealer to be like really prominent so that's why I like circle around it as opposed to just covering it straight on. There you go. All right, and then we're gonna do setting spray again. Like that to quickly dry it so I don't have to use as much powder. I don't really do a whole lot of makeup on my nose anyway. So. so, and I like my skin to look like skin. That's why I'm not doing excessive amounts of powder. Now, I will go ahead and dust on a little bit more of the one size fits all with a soft brush. Just reinforcing the contoured shapes. Like that. All right, here's where I do something that's a little different than other people do. I take tape. <laughs> okay, one of the dead giveaways to a man's makeup is when it looks like a physically masculine makeup is when it looks too perfect or too smooth you want to lift some of the smoothness off or some of the coverage and I'm gonna do it strategically you want to be careful where you do this and you don't want to do it all over the face just in certain areas and I'm gonna do it like right in this section and I do it to lift out some of the product, but to also look like my pores again and kind of show some real skin so that when I go out in daylight, you see that. And we're gonna dust on a little bit of bronzer over that. And you, when you do your bronzer, you wanna think of where the, where the light's hitting you when you go outside. So if, you walk outside and you close your eyes and you imagine where is that light going to hit? It's going to hit you on the high points. So it's going to hit you here, here, here. Now because we are wanting to stay within those lines so that it doesn't break um, the light line, you're going to do it in a square position. So you're not going to go like this motion. You're going to go straight across. So hit it here. Straight across. Straight across. Nose forehead, brow bones ever so lightly. 
like that. That is the look. It is all completed. This is what it looks like. I am gonna go do my brows and my eyes and then I will be right back with you. Um, so hold on one second. So this is the completed look. I went ahead and did my eyes. I did a, a couple of little false lashes on the lower lash line. I did my brows a little bit. I did a little bit of a kind of a nude liner on the inner duct here. And then I took the one size fits all liner and I just did it on the outer corner in the waterline and a little bit on the inner corner as well. And that's it. And then we are going to put on our Stetson and complete the look. What did I say? Save a horse, ride a cowboy. I like to be right at the, I like to be right at the natural light in the window. Um, that's what the makeup looked like in natural light. It's pretty impressive. Um, I'm actually really, really happy with the loose powder, the powder foundation, the primer, all of it was really fantastic. Um, I look forward to trying out some of the other products. So that's the look. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something and make sure to subscribe and tell your friends.